You're listening to the Heartland Newsfeed Radio Network, broadcasting live 24 7 at heartlandnewsfeed.com. How's it going, everybody? Brian Alvarez here on Wrestling Observer Live. We're here every day, Monday through Friday, noon Pacific, 3 Eastern, Sunday, 3 Pacific, 6 Eastern. We got a lot to talk about here today on the show. It is a weekend edition here. There is all sorts of news to get into over the last couple of days. Obviously, a UFC pay per view last night. Yes, that was a pay per view last night. Either $54 or $64 you paid for that. I liked the main event. It was fun. But man, that was a show, if ever there was one. We got a lot of news coming out of WWE as well. Raw and SmackDown this week. Lots of things being previewed, including appearances by Becky Lynch, who is suspended but on every show, including house shows now. She's back on house shows, so they fixed that. Seth Rollins is going to be there tomorrow. We've got an elimination match, a gauntlet match scheduled for SmackDown to determine who is going to get what slot in the elimination chamber. Got a lot of news coming out of AEW as well. Some contract details for Kenny Omega. More matches announced for WrestleMania weekend. Lots of stuff to get into. We're going to have a lot of time for calls here today as well. 844-411-5411 is the phone number. That is toll-free, 844-411-5411. And text messages, 425-780-7566. We'll throw these numbers out throughout the show. You can also grab them at any time at WrestlingObserver.com, right there on the front page. Quick programming note here for those of you who are subscribers. We got the worst winter weather in 70 years here in Seattle. Been hit with one storm after another, feet of snow here, depending on where you live, and more snow coming tonight, more snow coming on Monday, it's looking like. And so Vinny can make it over. The Brian and Vinny show will be done via phone tonight. NWA World Championship Wrestling and NXT is on the docket. We'll see what happens with the retro shows. May end up being myself and Lance Storm on Tuesday. Not sure if Vinny can get here for those either. But all of the other shows are on as scheduled. I'm here. I'm all ready to go. So we'll kick it off after the break. Wrestling Observer Live. Back in the show, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Sempervivi, also WrestlingObserver.com. Got a lot to get into here today. Phone lines are going strong. 844-411-5411. Text messages, 425-780-7566. Don't even think we talked about this on Friday, but the Nia Jax-Dean Ambrose, quote, intergender special attraction match that had been advertised for a WWE house show later this month, not happening. Jax versus Ambrose had been advertised via commercial for Raw's house show in Jonesboro, Arkansas, Friday, February 22nd. But WWE has confirmed to Dave Meltzer, the match is not happening. Post Wrestling also reported that someone in WWE reached out to them, stating that the ad was outdated and the house show match would not be happening. Ambrose has lost EC3 at house shows. Jax and Tamina have taken apart in angles where they've attacked Bailey, Natalia, and Dana. So all we really know about this is apparently there was an idea of doing Nia Jax, Dean Ambrose in an intergender match. And if you watched Raw when they did that confrontation, I mean, I thought that's right where they were going. Man, he's on his way out. I got to make his life miserable. He's going to be losing to Nia Jax. And as it turns out, apparently it was an idea that was had. And then they decided not to do it. And so it's not happening. Now, there have been rumors. Let me repeat. There have been rumors. It's not from my end. There have been rumors that there was a sponsor that spoke up and stated they did not want to support a product that promoted intergender wrestling. I don't know if that is true, but I know that I've heard that rumor today. All I know is they thought about it, they went as far as to create advertising for it, and then they decided not to do it, and it's not happening. So that's the story on Nia Jax and Dean Ambrose. Any thoughts on this, Mike? No. No, I don't. Although it's, uh, I guess there is one thought, which is there is a lot of debate in the wrestling community over what people think about intergender and bottom line is 
when it comes to a lot of things in WWE, as we've talked about with Saudi Arabia, with Hulk Hogan coming back, with all that sort of stuff, sponsors sometimes are the things that, that most matter. And if that rumor is correct and it is logical that a, a sponsor would be maybe not as progressive as some of the wrestling fans may want them to be if, they, if they're into intergender, uh, they, they are still a, a stick that is large and, and can be unwieldy sometimes. All right, by the way, that means, I guess, if we're doing Mixed Match Challenge again next year, they, they kind of talked about it a little bit on the investors call, but once again, we'll be having this weird Mixed Match Challenge where, I guess, the women can occasionally do a spot with the guys, but the guys are not allowed to touch the women, which makes for a very weird tournament over the course of three straight months, which they ran this one, but looks like no intergender in WWE's immediate future. Let's go to the phones. You're on the air. What's up? I have a question about the prediction you made a couple of weeks ago on SmackDown, saying that they're going to get all the geeks. He thinks to be main eventing SmackDown after WrestleMania because I don't think I said geeks. I know, or I, I said that I said that Raw would end up the stacked roster again. Yes, yeah, so my question is who's to be main eventing and then SmackDown then after WrestleMania? Like who are like the top five guys you think going to be? I don't know. Ryan, I, I know what you're trying to say here. I, I see that you brought up Rhino, okay? But my, my point is this. There are people... Listen, SmackDown has got a very loyal audience. Team Blue. Team Becky, okay? And they will tell you, Oh, Brian, you're wrong. SmackDown has the stronger roster than Raw right now. AJ and Joe and blah, 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 blah. It, I'm talking the nobody's really moving numbers, okay? But there are certain individuals that their star power is greater than others, okay? Ronda Rousey, she's on Raw. Brock Lesnar, he's on Raw. Roman Reigns, he was on Raw. John Cena was a free agent, but he's doing a lot of stuff on Raw, okay? Raw is, in their mind, the stacked brand right now. Regardless of who your favorite, who your favorite wrestler is, is irrelevant. In their mind, Raw is the stacked brand. And if you look at Raw and SmackDown, which are both on the USA Network, and they both air at the exact same time, and they both air live. One's on Monday, one's on Tuesday. Okay? Granted, Monday is wrestling night, and it has been since 1991. Okay? But... Earlier than that, by the way, if you enjoy primetime wrestling. But the point of this is, Raw still beats SmackDown every week, with very rare exceptions. And keep in mind, that's with a third hour that's dragging down the total. So, to your average wrestling fan, not those of you on Team Blue, you real hardcores, to your average wrestling fan, Raw is the stacked show compared to SmackDown. I believe that after the draft, it is going to remain the stacked show, and is going to remain that way all the way until September or October when they actually jump to Fox, at which point I think they're going to either do like a secondary draft or they're going to do like an invade. They'll do something to load up SmackDown with the people that they feel are the marquee stars, and then that's how things will change. That's my prediction. Am I clear on that? Anybody else confused besides Ryan? No? Excellent. I think everything's uh, nice and clear there, although I, I think it's going to start a little bit sooner than that. I can see them making some big shakeups, actually, or, or have some big names move over in April here after WrestleMania. And then, again, I can see what you're saying, though, absolutely. They have a lot of time to, to go until and a lot of things to figure out before they move towards that, that debut on Fox. So they still have plenty of time to do whatever they want to do, including, you know, you don't know what's going to happen with Brock Lesnar. A lot of people think, you know, well, Seth, Seth Rollins is going to defeat Brock Lesnar at WrestleMania. That may not be the case. And if Brock goes into hibernation mode for a while after WrestleMania, I mean, you still have him to pull out as he gets towards the Fox deal. And Daniel Cormier is a question mark over if and when he'll play a part with anything. So, I mean, there's a lot of moving parts here. So, yeah, and a lot of time as well. Ron Rousey's Nick title defense, Ruby Riot, announced on social media. Set up for Elimination Chamber on Raw on Monday. Announced on social media. The updated did you card see it on Instagram? I did not. Was it any good? I don't know. All right. Did anyone see it on Instagram? I'm sure some people did. Anyway, here's your Elimination Chamber card. 
It is Daniel Bryan versus AJ, Randy Orton, Jeff Hardy, Mustafa Ali, Samoa Joe in an Elimination Chamber match. You got Ronda Rousey versus Ruby Wright, Raw Women's title. You got the Chamber match for the Women's Tag Team Championships with Nia Jackson. I, I can barely say this with a straight face. Nia Jackson, Tamina, Liv and Sarah Logan, Sasha and Bailey, Mandy and Sonya, Peyton and Billy, and Naomi and Carmella. And Crockett Cup 86. Oh. And the SmackDown Tag Team Champions, Shane McMahon and The Miz versus The Usos. And Buddy Murphy against Akira Tozawa. Now on the road to the chamber, on SmackDown, this coming week, they are going to be doing an elimination, a gauntlet match. I keep saying elimination, it's a gauntlet match. Daniel Bryan, AJ, Randy Orton, Mustafa Ali, Joe, and Jeff Hardy will be doing the gauntlet match. Which, if you recall, they do one on Raw last year that went, it was like an hour and 15 minutes or something like that. I can't even remember how long it went. But it was the longest match ever on WWE uh, television. And winner will enter the Elimination Chamber last during the pay-per-view. So, of course, last year went more than an hour. We also have the Usos on McMiz TV with Shane McMahon and The Miz. And... That is a championship match at the Chamber, obviously, as well. And as Dave has noted, the Usos' contracts are up in the spring. Some people believe the Usos are one of the greatest tag teams in the entire world. Young Bucks looking for opponents. Obviously, they're going to get an offer from All Elite Wrestling. Obviously, they're going to get an offer from WWE with a raise, as many have gotten. So it's going to be very interesting to see... What happens at Elimination Chamber and WrestleMania? Do the Usos end up being given the titles to resign? What do we end up doing? So we will find out. Raw Monday, Seth Rollins is going to be there. He's nursing a back injury, so he's not going to be wrestling for a while. And the suspended Becky Lynch, her streak of not missing shows continues as the McMahons have invited her back to Raw on Monday. And we'll be back after the break. Observer Live. Back on the show, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Sempervivi, also of WrestlingObserver.com. If you want to call us today, 844-411-5411. Text messages, 425-780-7566. All these numbers on the front page of WrestlingObserver.com. Let's go to the phones. You're on the air. What's up? Hey, it's number one Paul in Barbersville. How are you guys doing? What's happening? Um, You're number well, two, Paul. Was- we-, we know who the real number one Paul is. Well, I, I, he, he sadly passed on, so I thought that gave me a promotion. But, I see. Okay. Uh, all right. But uh, I, I am the number one Paul in all of Barbersville. That's um, true. That's something. Yeah. But uh, anyway. I don't know another. Today was Chikara's National Pro Wrestling Day. Uh, they held the event in Lancaster, Ohio, as opposed to uh, usually the Philadelphia area. And they, uh, in the main event... Princess Kimberly and the Whisper defeated the team of Crumbles and Defarge to retain the Campinaros de Parejas and your uh, favorite angle, the tag team that does not get along. Oh, um, always a classic. Assault. Yes, Missile Assault Man uh, defeated Juan Francisco de Coronado, who was later revealed to be in tax trouble. And perhaps in the most uh, relevant angle to this show. Hold on, Brian, Paul. Hold on. Um, Hold on. Before you go to that angle. Oh. Yes. Coronado was found to be in tax trouble? I'm feeling that. Yes, yes. He, he got a letter uh, during the a, uh, show and was very upset, and a fan on Twitter actually unveiled uh, the results of it. But he is a uh, apparently in big trouble with the Ecuadorian government. Really? So, they deliver mail on I, I Sunday? Know. Apparently so. Wow. It's Ecuador, the hard workers. Anyway. Uh, the Chikara Interim Grand Champion, uh, Dasher Hatfield, uh, revealed that, oh, here, uh, <clears throat> that, uh, he is not granting a title shot to Mr. Touchdown, who, as we all know, was the Grand Champion prior to his injury. And I was wondering, Brian, with, uh, Mr., uh, <clears throat> with Dasher Hatfield having no challenges, in the immediate future, um, what would be a bigger match than the interim grand ch- champion of Chikara versus your IWC, IWCA 
Texarkana Television Championship. There would be no bigger match. Hmm. And and Dasher yeah. Dasher does work for Black Label mm-hmm. Pro. Oh. Yes, yes. And you need an opponent for WrestleMania weekend. And I, I'm trying to think of a bigger match. Well I, I hey. realize I've got an open challenge, Paul. Like I don't care who shows up. So if well, you, if Dasher's available, he's welcome to come on down to the ring and, and we can give it a go. Well, you know who's on the Chikara show right. today and, and you know, brought up how WWE is shying away from intergender. Why don't you wrestle Penelope Ford? Why don't you give her a title shot? Do you think you could beat a girl, Brian? I would out wrestle her, Mike. Mm-hmm. That is what I would do. Mm-hmm. But I'm not sure if Black Label Pro yeah. sponsors will allow such a thing. You know, I want to mention one thing. I want to thank you very much for the call, Paul. Are you aware that on the way back from the last Black Label Pro show, I was in the car with Dasher Hatfield, and I didn't know it because he was unmasked. Really? Yeah, I thought there was just another guy in the car. <laughs> Later I found out it was Dasher Hatfield. You didn't hear the know the voice, or yeah. did you just keep talking the whole time? You probably you thought I was no selling him, and I just I had no idea till later. So there you go. I got to read this here. This is from last night. Person says, I was listening to the Sunday Observer Radio, and I want to know, why did the taped Raws do better than the live Raws during the Attitude Era? Because we were talking about live versus taped. And the answer is, they didn't always do better, but they usually did as good or better. And there's a few reasons for that. The number one reason is most fans are not super hardcore, at least back then. It's changed a little bit now, but most fans are not super hardcore fans on the internet all the time, looking for spoilers, calling hotlines, reading newsletters, going on the internet. They just, on Monday night, they watch their Raw. Calling hotlines. Yeah, I'm talking about the 90s, dude. There was a lot of hotline calling in the 90s. Well, you had one. Yeah, I did. So the point of this is, like, back then, most fans didn't know whether it was live or taped. Like, if you go back on the WWE Network and you do what Vinny and Craig and I do, when you watch the shows in order, like, during the period where sometimes Raw was lived and sometimes Raw was taped, watch those shows and see if you can tell me when the show was live and when the show was taped without looking at the little watermark that you notice every now and then that says whether it's live or not. Like, there's there's really no way of knowing, and most fans didn't know. Now, why it did better more often than not than a live show is likely, there's no for sure answer, but to me, if you're taping two weeks of television every other week, and the live audience is going to see four hours of wrestling, I mean, what you're going to do is, during the first show, which is live, you're going to build up storylines and angles to pay off in the second half of the taping for the week after. And so, what's happening is, the live show is a show that builds, and the tape show is a show that pays off some of the stuff that you built up on the live show. And so, if you're a fan watching, and you don't know whether it's live or taped, well, certain weeks, they're building up a big match for the next week, and they pay it off the next week, and little do you know, you're watching a taped show. Now, we always get these people that text into this show, they call into the show, they write me, they say, Brian. Because, you see, everybody, there are people who, because of what they do in their lives... They extrapolate that to the whole world, okay? These are the people that say, nobody watches television. People only stream. I don't watch any television, they say, and my three friends don't watch any television. Therefore, nobody in the world watches television, okay? This is incorrect, okay? This is you and your three friends. The numbers for Raw, everybody, the DVR numbers for Raw are between probably 18 and 23% every week, all right? That means that approximately 75, 77, 80, 82% of the people that watch Raw, every Monday they sit down in front of a television, which provides them with cable, and they watch Raw from start to finish, commercials and everything, okay? I think these people are crazy. But it's the vast majority of the people who watch Raw. There's a very, very small number of people that DVR. And back in the 90s, there were a very, very small number of people that taped the shows and watched them on their video cassette player. 
So the point of all of this is, live taped, television executives believe that people won't DVR live sports because they're live, okay? In a lot of cases, that may be true. But for professional wrestling, the fact of the matter is, it doesn't matter in 2019 whether it's live or whether it's taped. The vast majority of your audience is going to watch it as if it is live every single week. End of story. That's my speech. That randomly reminded me of why Nitro. I never understood why Nitro never got rid of the replay that they would have on immediately afterwards. I guess it was the the West Coast airing, but it was like when Raw got hot and they were really in competition, it was like you could watch Nitro from 8 to 9 and then watch Raw from 9 to 11, and if you missed anything or felt as though you missed anything and you didn't record Nitro in another room or something like that, you could just catch the replay. And I always thought that was really dumb. I just thought that it was like you placed less of a premium on your programming when you could basically just have everybody switch over and not miss the same thing because they could just catch you later. Yeah, but the reality is most people did watch it live, and they switched back and forth. And... The added the, the replay added even more viewers to Nitro. So, yeah, I'm not debating that. I just thought that was dumb that they actually had a replay of the show, especially if this Raw got hot. Now, I believe, in my, in my opinion, I believe we have upwards of 30 million people that listen to Wrestling Observer Live. About and I, that, yeah. And I believe that because it doesn't matter how many times I say this, I still have people emailing or texting me this, like, on a daily basis. And I'm going to explain this one more time. This mm-hmm. person here says, I, I, sh- I shouldn't say one more time. One more time this week. I'm sure I'll explain it again next week. This person says, I usually watch on Sling TV, but I don't think my ratings are being counted. If you are watching Raw via legal means, that means if you're watching on cable, on Sling TV, on Direct TV, on Hulu, on YouTube TV, if you are watching Raw via legal means... You are being counted. Clear? If you go Why is to that so hard for people to understand? I have no idea because they don't understand how if Nielsen works. You're so works. damn technologically savvy. Look, you're not that slick where they're not counting you. You're no. not in the ether somewhere if they you're, got you. If you're torrenting raw, okay, you're not being counted. All right? But those numbers are are are, are minuscule, all right? If you are watching raw via legal means, streaming or otherwise, you are being counted. Are we clear? Hmm. I expect to hear, yes, sir, on the other side of radios everywhere and listening devices. Look at this numbskull. What about DirecTV now? I'm going to punch you! <laughs> the Nitro replay was great, this person said, because you could get both shows on one VHS tape. Hey, that's true. Oh, yeah, that's absolutely with the EP. Sure, yeah. can. What horrible VHS tapes those would be, by the way. Oh, I have tons of, of VHS, and I still have them. I have not broken down and gotten rid of them yet like you did smartly years ago. All right, back in a moment with more, everybody. Wrestling Observer Live. Go. All right, let's go back to the phones. You're on the air. What's going on? Hey, guys. It's Ken from Staten Island. Yes, Ken. Yeah. Yeah, I just wanted to comment. I've been a huge Audrey Kong fan since 1994. I remember being happy when WWE used her in the 95 Survivor Series. So to think that 24 years later, she's getting another chance to shine in the United States on a prominent show, I'm really, really happy. Because I held out hope over the years that WWE would use her in like the Mae Young Classic or even against Asuka in NXT. I think that would have been great. But I think in their minds, she's either too old or she's not attractive enough. So... I'm a classic example of a fan who's lost interest over the years that's really interested in um, AEW. I'm going to try to, in fact, get a ticket tomorrow and fly to Vegas to see it. I don't know if I'll be successful, but I'll try. Good luck, dude. It's going to be tough. Hopefully you got a pre-sale yeah. code. Yeah, well, I, I signed up for it. I haven't gotten it yet. All righty. Well, good luck. You're the one that wanted her in the Hall of Fame, too, didn't you? No, I want Cindy Lauper in the WWE Hall of Fame. Oh, well, so she if, should if definitely... Both- Yes, yeah, she, she should be yeah, involved. So 2019 will be a good year if I get both those things. All right. Well, I want to thank you very much for the call. Good luck on tickets, dude. Yeah, Tomorrow, I predict they're all gone in the pre-sale. Zero tickets will go on sale to the public. I, I don't believe you. 
You don't believe me? We'll find it's out. It's possible. Yeah, we'll you never find know. Out. By the way, I think Bull Nakano would probably, and I don't think she's making it anytime soon, but I think she would be in the WWF Hall of Fame faster than Aja Kong would. This person says, the woman's elimination chamber sounds like a mess. They should have put the Sky Pirates in there instead of the Iconics. You don't say. Why? You're ab- what do you mean, why? Look, you kidding me? Brian, look. I can live with this pay-per-view happening and, and whatever, Sasha and Bailey coming out of it, and then facing the Ice Pirates at WrestleMania. Like, I, give me that. Well, they're not going to. I don't need to see all of this jockeying you want to do and that people want to do to put, like, well, maybe Asuka could have teamed up with Naomi. No, who cares? <laughs> like, let's just get through this and let's get through WrestleMania before we bring anybody up in this big jumble of what's going on. I don't care if it's Shayna Baszler. I don't care if it's Velveteen Dream, any of these people. You're, you're welcome to not want them in there, but I have to watch this stupid chamber match that's going to go 30 like, I minutes. I don't. There's going to go 30 minutes, okay? And I could not possibly... All I want is to not suffer. <laughs> so put Asuka in there and put the Sky Pirates in there and get rid of the Iconics and get rid of Carmella. I don't care what the finish is. I don't get who. I don't care who gets eliminated. Then I will suffer of, less. Do you want to? You want to get rid of the chamber? Because if you got rid of the chamber, you wouldn't have this issue, and you could just have a tag match or a four corners match or whatever. There's six it is. teams. It'd be a six With, corner match. Well, again, you don't have to do all that. Like you say, it's fake, so you don't have to do any of that stuff. Well, if it's fake, you know what? Let's do Sasha and Bailey versus the Sky Pirates in a straight match for the titles. I'm good with that. Okay, well, it's not going to happen. So, how about we put the Sky Pirates and Oscar in this match and get rid of the Iconics and Carmella and suffer less? Got it? That's all I'm asking. Fine. All I want to do is suffer less. I wonder if we'll get a Triple Tails redo, which that team was the, the Shirai sisters and Asuka. And I wonder if we're going to get a, a version of that, if we can get Asuka and, and the Sky Pirates on the same team, at least for a while, as much as, as great as their matches would be against each other, because they are just because of the way they trained and the when they came up, a cut above a lot of the women wrestling in WWE. But them together as a team, as a unit, would be make me very, very happy. Bert says, how many of the tickets were bought by brokers? Well, none. Zero tickets have been sold. Well, yeah. We'll yeah. find out tomorrow. Last time, yeah. last time, nearly every ticket was sold to a, a fan. The broker numbers were minuscule last time. How many times did they say during that press conference that we've learned from our mistakes? And I love it. They said, we learned from our mistakes. We won't let anything happen. And then like they talk about the site going down for everybody to be patient. That, that could not have inspired some confidence from people. This person here says, I have a friend who watches the clips on YouTube. And as a network for pay-per-views, some people just watch on YouTube, but they are still fans. Correct. I'm not sure the point of that, but that is correct. trying to prove here, yeah. Speaking of TV ratings, why isn't it a bigger story that we are in WrestleMania season doing under 3 million for Raw? Horrible numbers. Well, they're down 17% or whatever from last year. And we've been talking about this ad nauseum. It's been like this all year. They've they've run off 20% of the audience over the last year. That's horrible. But, I mean, last year, they were only 20% higher than they are right now. So that wasn't that exciting last year. I mean, they're they're running off viewers for one reason or the other. And I can think of a dozen reasons, but that's it. Let's go to the phones here on the air. What's up? Hey, Brian. It's BJ from Arizona. Yes. Hey, Brian. Um, I just had a quick question. Um, I didn't know if you were able to watch it yet, um, you know, due to the snowstorm and everything you guys have been having. But... Um, did you were you able to see the amazing debut of Eric Bugenhagen on Tonight. NXT TV this week? Tonight. <laughs> okay. Well, there's a guy that comes out and has this unbelievable entrance and he gets the crowd over with him. It's great. And it's and then it's followed by an amazing Drew Gulak and uh Matt, Matt Riddle match that you're going to love. It's such a good match. I, I'm very excited for tonight. That and NWA World Championship Wrestling. What could be a better night for me? Nothing. Almost. You might have double the boogie. I'm sure it'll, man, be, be, I'm sure it'll be better than that women's chamber match we were talking about. Yeah, watch that match be great, everybody. I mean, I don't think it's going to be, but hey, you never know. But I don't think it's going to be. Oh, uh, yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty confident it's not going to be. All right. A couple of other news notes here, then we'll go back to the phones and such. Is one of them about Eddie Kingston? What about Eddie Kingston? Lost the king, uh, kickboxing match. 
Eddie Kingston was in a kickboxing match? Yeah. Uh, yeah, so didn't get a chance to see it, but uh, I want to see it. So if somebody's got it, send it to me. Let me know how I can see this. But yes, apparently came out of it okay. He was tweeting afterwards. Apparently won the first round, I guess, lost the next two or vice versa. At least that's what he thought he did, but was not knocked unconscious or anything like that. So I know he's been questionable about where his wrestling career is going to be going, but, but who knows what could happen with Eddie Kingston. Who apparently, according to Filthy Tom Lawler, uh, last night uh, doing a show with him. Um, apparently, Eddie uh, still smokes Marlboro Reds, which makes for a great combination for a kickboxer. It's a throwback. Uh, we have got a tag match for Mania Weekend. I'm not making this up. With you? This is for Impact. Oh. The Lucha Brothers, Penta and Ray Phoenix, will be facing Rob Van Dam and Sabu. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I'm not making this up. Wow. Yep. WrestleMania weekend yep. is truly becoming one big fever dream, isn't it? Kenny Omega opened up about his contract negotiations with Dave and Garrett. He notes, The most surprising thing to me was how accommodating and how cool it was to discuss a possible future with WWE. Uh, I didn't think they'd ever be in the running. I was like, I'll hear you guys out. I didn't think it'd be good because everybody was telling me what to expect. I have nothing but great things to say about them. But in the end, AEW was the best thing for me, and it's the most exciting choice I've made in my career. I had a very interesting thought when I was listening to him, because he is not the only guy who has negotiated with WWE, because he just figured he'd at least hear them out, and he had no intentions of going. And while having multiple discussions with Triple H, continually asked himself, why am I calling this guy back? He's talked me into calling him back again. Hunter is a very... He's he's said to be a very, very cordial, uh, smart, uh, charismatic, charming. charismatic and charming. And, and uh, this man got Bruno San Martino back so, in the same room yes, with Vince McMahon. Here's my question, okay? You notice all these people are talking to Hunter. Mm-hmm. They're not talking to Vince. Yeah. Okay. Someday Vince is going to be gone. Mm-hmm. All right? How many people have you heard that have said... Man, I Vince loved me. But Jim Ross, that SOB, he cut me. Yeah? Okay. It wasn't Vin- Jim Ross, it was Vince. Mm-hmm. But, but Jim Ross was the bad cop. There's always a bad cop. Oh, yeah. Right now, the bad cop is Vince. Hunter's the good cop. So I wonder, when Vince is no longer around, who is going to be Triple H's bad cop? The hatchet. Who's going to be the guy where everyone goes, Hunter is such a great guy, and he so wanted me to be a part of WWE, but man, that HBK, he he just ended negotiations. Like, who's going to be the bad cop? Yeah, well, somebody is. That's, hey, that's the way the business goes. That's how it works. That's why it's called Good Cop, Bad Cop. It's been going on forever. So somebody is going to be playing the heavy for Triple H one day. We'll find out who it is. I mean, there's a lot of people there now. You know, look, how many people are sitting there behind the scenes? Who knows who it could be? So, yeah, somebody is going to have to be, though. And and who knows? Maybe maybe Triple H becomes that guy. Maybe he becomes the, you know, the, is, is is playing that, that hard role and somebody else is playing the good role. You never know what could happen. We'll see what role Stephanie plays in all this, too, as time goes on. Because there's a lot of things with her I don't think are determined yet with her future. Oh, this person says, what about Stephanie for bad cop? Well, the problem is when she's not on TV, she's total good cop. She goes out there and she tries to explain to everybody why they're bad guys on TV and good guys in real life. Ain't going to be her. This person suggests Road Dog. Yeah. Road Dog would be a great bad cop. He could be a bad cop on Twitter while he's at it as well. Adam Pierce? I mean, who's had experience doing like these types of things anyway? And the more people they keep bringing in of, of you know of skill, again, they, who knows who it could be down the line here? But there are a lot of options. This person here says Io and Kyrie aren't getting called up anytime soon, and they shouldn't. You want them to lose to Dana and Alicia every week, Brian? Hey, listen, fake Chris Jericho to sent this in the other Chris Jericho. Tell me the last time that Asuka lost to Dana Brooke or Alicia Fox. Tell me the last time that Shinsuke Nakamura lost to Ty Dillinger. Like, let's not go overboard here, okay? Not everybody that gets called up gets used right. 
okay? But there are people that have been called up that are very, very talented, and they're not out there doing jobs for Dana Brooke. I do not expect Io Shirai and Kyrie Sane to be called up and do a job the first week to Dana Brooke and Alicia Fox. I don't think it's going to happen. They're not going to win every match, but they're not going to be up there losing to Dana and Alicia on a regular basis. More of the Kevin Owens types that have come up. I mean, for crying out loud. that category. I mean, Alicia and Dana aren't beating anybody, even people that have been on the roster forever. All right. A couple more here. Let's go to the phone. You're on the air. What's up? Hey, Brian. This is Mike from New York. How, how are you doing today? What's going on? Hey, I was watching the old uh, retro shows the other night. I've been kind of suffering through it with you, and I was wondering, whatever happened to the little guy from Three Count, uh, Shannon Moore, what it, whatever happened to him? I remember that after he got out of wrestling, he opened up a tattoo parlor, and I think he did a little bit of wrestling, and he was at uh, uh, StarCast uh, overall in Weekend, and I really don't know what else he's been doing. Is he still the Prince of Punk? I mean, you could probably go up on his Twitter and find out what he's been doing, but uh, as far as I know, just running uh, tattoo parlors. And hey, Shane Helms, by the way, another guy who you could add in that mix. Isn't he now signed by WWE to do some work? Shane Helms? Yeah. I don't think he... All I know is that, like, I don't think he'd signed anywhere, but I think that, like, he was inevitably going to be signed somewhere. Like, it's gonna, he's gonna, there's going to be a bidding war over him for who he's going to go work for. Because it could be Impact, it could be All Elite, could be WWE. So, I mean, maybe he has signed and I missed it, but last I heard, he hadn't been signed by anybody yet, but he was likely going to uh, get a pretty good deal from somewhere. So hey, we'll long see. term, I don't know what happens here, but short term, this is great for guys' pockets. This person here says, what about Shinsuke versus Jinder and Asuka versus Carmella? Yeah, ways down the road when they were pushing them as the champions... Dana Brooke and Alicia Fox aren't anywhere near the championships. Are they even in the chamber? No, Shayna's not. Okay, Dana's She lost with Natalie. All right, back in a moment, everybody. Observer Live. Natty. (laughs) I open up here with a correction, everybody. Shane Helms signed to WWE. So there you go. Yeah. That's the answer to that question right here. Now you can be the hatchet hurricane. This person here says, and by this person here, I mean Black Label Pro. Just posted a thing. I retweeted it. Who will accept the Brian Alvarez Open Challenge for the coveted ICW, ICWA, Texarkana television title? April 5th, 3.30, Jersey City, New Jersey. A beautiful graphic. Myself, the gorgeous Texarkana title. A lot of cool graphics. As I noted here on Twitter, I expect to win this match via forfeit. Because no one's going to show up. You hear me? Even though you're in town, Mike. You could be in that crowd. I could. How about this? How about Papa Stunt? Oh. Yeah. Yeah, he's on Twitter. He goes, oh, I wish young Marco was there to, to take him down. He can't take me down. That kid Dude. couldn't take me down with my legs tied together. You better watch it, okay? By the way, nice joke about legs there when it comes to Marco, but you may have to worry about another Papa. Papa I had not Briscoe. thought of that. Papa Briscoe may be looking for revenge. I'd take on Papa Briscoe. I'd take on all these Papas. Bring them all on. I don't Although know I, I will have to say, for, but... I, I would not be surprised if, if Marco Stunt's father put on a better fight than his son. He's, he's at least three times his size. Well, who's not? He's built like a brick wall. So, yeah, maybe. Maybe that'll be who I take on. We're out of time, everybody. We'll talk more about this over the next couple of days. i got a lot of stuff coming up later on tonight. Lots of stuff going on, so check it out. Thanks, Mike, as always. Callers and listeners, everybody to the studio. Talk to you next time if we're not snowed in. Wrestling Observer Live.